So, Tunix. Whether you're at the LARP, a Ren Fair, or another historically inspired event, tunics are always a great basic garment to have. And what's even better is that they're pretty easy to sew. They're also a great garment to make if you don't have that much sewing experience yet. That's what I'll be showing you today. How to sew your first tunic. And best of all, I'm going to show you a few different options so you can customize your tunic the way that you want it. In short, I'll be showing you a generic way to sew a tunic. It's not going to be historically accurate or any time period specific. You can opt to do it by hand, but I can definitely recommend to do it by machine because I think doing it by hand would just unnecessarily complicate things. This tutorial will also not tell you how to use your machine because there are so many different sewing machines out there and they all work different, so I can't explain how your machine works. Aside from that, this tutorial should be usable by pretty much anyone. Before we can actually get started on the sewing itself, we do have to decide what fabric and how much fabric we're going to need. Things to take into consideration when choosing your fabric. First of all, is your event a summer or winter event? Because that depends on how warm you want your fabric to be. For example, if you're on a summer event, a linen, breathable fabric might be very welcome. On the other hand, if you're on a winter event, something that's wind tight will be a lot warmer. Something like wool, for example. The second thing you want to take into consideration is whether your event has open fires. For example, when you're cooking on a fire or you're sitting close to a campfire late at night. Because that means that you might not want to opt for fully synthetic fabrics. Reason for that being, if very synthetic fabric catches fire, it will melt to your skin. That's not a good thing. Another thing about synthetic fabrics, and this is also looking back at the summer or winter events, is that very synthetic fabrics won't be very breathable. So if you're on a summer event and it's really warm, you're going to be sweaty. This does however not mean that you cannot use any synthetics at all. There are lots of fabrics which are blends, for example, 30% synthetic, 70% linen, cotton, wool, whatever. Blends are, well, blends, so they're somewhere in the middle. It's pretty much up to you. Also, take into consideration when you want to look for wools, you will be wearing this close to your skin. Try not to find a too itchy fabric, because you'll hate yourself after a while. Aside from that, for this tutorial, stay away from stretchy fabrics. You should have a fabric that's not stretchy. And that's pretty much it. Aside from that, it's whatever color, weight, whatever you like. I will be making a winter and a summer tunic, so I'll show you both how to work with heavier and lighter fabrics. The next question is, how much fabric do we actually need? It's actually quite simple. You need twice the length of your finished tunic, plus once the length of your sleeves. And round this number up a bit. It's better to have too much than too little. However, if you have a smaller size and the circumference of your final tunic is less than 1 meter 30, you can do with once the length of your tunic and once the length of your sleeve. You will have to fold the fabric differently for this when you're cutting it, but I'll show you how to do that. But how do we actually take those measurements? For the sleeve length, you want to find the sleeve seam at the shoulder on your t-shirt. Then. With a slightly bent arm, measure the distance from that seam to where you want your sleeve to end. For the tunic length, measure from your shoulder seam to wherever you want your tunic to end. For me, that was halfway in my upper leg. Now that we know the type and how much fabric we need, it's time to look at what else do we need to make this tunic. First of all, a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, because it's always handy to have something around to make notes. Then we're going to need a t-shirt. This t-shirt should be loose, but not ridiculously oversized. Basically, it should be a t-shirt of which you're not going to use the stretch in the shirt and it's just slightly loose fitting. Something that's very handy to have around is a pair of fabric scissors. If this is really your very first project ever and you don't have dedicated fabric scissors, try and find the sharpest scissors you have around the house and that should also do. Basically, you should be able to cut through fabric in one go. But 
If you're going to sew more often, I can definitely recommend getting at least a pair of dedicated scissors for fabric after that actual fabric scissors. It's also very handy to have a smaller pair of scissors just for small bits of thread or if you make mistakes so you can cut through each individual stitch and you can well basically use a smaller pair of scissors also as a seam ripper. Optionally, if you do have a sewing stash around, there should be a seam ripper in there, which is very handy in case you make mistakes. And I'm already going to say it, especially if it's your first project, you will make mistakes. That's completely normal. So either a seam ripper or a pair of small scissors is definitely handy to have around. We're not going to do any sewing without any pins, just regular plastic headed pins or metal pins. Both are fine. It is always handy to have at least some needles around. You're always going to do some bit of hand stitching on every project anyway. Optional, but if you do have it around, it can be handy, is tailor's chalk. This will just mean that you can use less pins because if you do not have tailor's chalk, you can do the markings with the pins but that does mean extra work of putting and taking out the pins. Then something that you're going to need for every crafting project ever is rulers. They're just handy to have around. And specifically for sewing projects, a flexible tape measure can always be handy. A for longer bits of measurements or because a body does not consist of straight lines and this one can curve and still measure. So also very handy to have around. We're also going to need a bit of scrap fabric. It doesn't have to be much around 25 by 30 or 40 centimeters should be plenty and it also doesn't matter what kind of fabric we just need to have a bit of scrap fabric that said we're also going to need a bigger piece of paper this is specifically tracing paper it doesn't have to be tracing paper per se a bit of paper 30 by 40 centimeters we will need that and last but not least how are we going to put these fabric pieces together with some bits of thread, of course. You can either grab black or white, whatever fits your fabric color best, or you can grab a color really close to your fabric. And that's it. This is everything you're going to need to put together your tunic. Then we can start drawing the only pattern piece that we will make for this, the facing. For this facing, we need the approximate diameter of your neck. Measure this at the widest point. And if you're doubting, round up. For me, it was 15 centimeters. Then draw a long line on the paper. This will be your center line of the facing. Draw a circle around this line with the diameter of your neck measurement. For the slit in the front, we draw a mark 8 cm away from the edge of the circle. Make this measurement bigger if your head is larger, but 8 cm should fit most heads. Then draw 4 cm around the circle and the slash line. Congratulations, you have drawn the only pattern piece! Now you can cut this out completely and trace it onto a piece of scrap fabric. I personally have a bargain bin curtain from IKEA which has served me well for a lot of projects. But pretty much anything without stretch would work as well, such as old bed sheets. I like to trace this bit with a pen, as it won't fade and it is a scrap piece anyway. After cutting it out, you can fit it and then you can mark the shoulder line, on the highest point of your shoulder. It will probably correspond closely to the shoulder seam of the t-shirt you are wearing. Then you can take it off and compare the mark on both sides. Make sure it ends up on the same height. If done correctly, it will end up on about one third of the circle, rather than the middle. Then we can start drafting the tunic body. In case you really want to be certain you don't waste your pretty fabric, you could make a mock-up first by following this tutorial with scrap fabric, so old curtains or bed sheets. For the tunic with the entire bodice length made in one piece, we start by folding the t-shirt in half, and moving the sleeves out of the way. When you buy fabric, it usually comes folded in half. Put the folded side of the t-shirt against the fold in the fabric. You should place the shoulder seam at least the length of your tunic plus 7 cm away from the cut edge of the fabric. Then you can pin all around your t-shirt. With the final garment you do not want to end up anywhere within these lines. So make sure that everything you pin and do in the next step will be wider than this t-shirt is. Remember where the sleeve started on your t-shirt when you were wearing it. Usually, the seam is still on your shoulder instead of on your arm. In general, you will want the sleeves of the tunic to start a bit further up your arm. So, put a pin a few centimeter away from the end of the shoulder seam of your t-shirt. For the width of the body at the bottom of the armhole, especially for women, keep in mind that if your t-shirt needs to stretch, it will be in this part. So, always make this at least a bit wider than your t-shirt. For me, 1-2cm to two centimeters is plenty, as the t-shirt was quite loose. But if you have a bigger chest than mine, or a slightly tighter t-shirt, 
you might want to make it wider. For the body of the tunic, I always like to have them end up a lot wider than a t-shirt on the bottom. So I find a nice straight line from the end of my armhole to the bottom of the tunic and pin this. For me, this was around 5cm wider at the end of my t-shirt. And we'll just continue that line to where I want the tunic to end. Then we can take the t-shirt off the fabric, flip it so the shoulder is on the same line as it was before, and repeat the pinning steps, trying to make sure all the measurements are the same as on the previous side. Then, from the edge of the shoulder to the bottom of the armhole, measure this length and note it down on paper. We will need this for the sleeves later. After we finish pinning, mark the shoulder line, either with tailor's chalk or pins. Then we can start the super scary part, cutting the fabric. Cut the bottom hems with a seam allowance of 5cm, so 5cm away from the pinned line. And cut all the other seams with a seam allowance of 2cm. This is slightly more than is usually given in patterns, but this allows us to easier adjust the tunic later, in case it ends up slightly too small. It is better to have cut it too large than to cut it too small. For the smaller tunic, with the fabric saving version, we cut the body slightly differently. For this, we fold the edges of the fabric to each other, so there are two folds in the fabric. The t-shirt can be lined up on the fabric fold with two or more centimeter seam allowance on top of the shoulder seam. The rest of the pinning is the same as for the other tunic. Once you finish pinning one side, you can flip the t-shirt, line it up on the fold on the other side and repeat the process. Again, we cut the bottom hem with 5cm seam allowance. All the other seams, including the shoulder seam, are cut with 2cm seam allowance. Next, we can draft and cut the sleeves. For this, we need the measurements we took earlier. The measurement we took from the body. The sleeve width at the top of the shoulder to the bottom of the armhole. For me, this was 15cm. And because I like my sleeves white, I added another 5cm. Then, don't be an idiot like me and double this last measurement, seeing as the sleeves will be folded in half. So we need this measurement twice, which means a sleeve width at the top of 40 centimeters. Note where the middle is. Then measure your sleeve length from this line, which for me was 53 centimeters. The last measurement we need the width of the sleeve at the bottom. For this you can wrap your tape measure around your wrist and slide it until you think you've got a nice sleeve opening at the bottom. For me this was 30 centimeters. Then we can connect the ends of the two sleeve widths together to form the completed sleeve pattern. Then we can cut the sleeve from the fabric. Again, 2 cm at all the edges except the bottom of the sleeve. Take 5 cm for this and try not to taper these last 5 cm. The last bit to cut is the facing. You will only need one, so make sure your fabric isn't folded. If you are lucky, you can even use a scrap piece from earlier. But do make sure the slash line is parallel to the edge of the fabric. You can trace the facing with tailor's chalk or mark it with pins. For now, cut around the outside only. Do not cut the inner circle or slash line yet. If you cut your tunic body from two pieces, we start by attaching them back together. Lay the fabric pieces right sides together, aka with the sides that you eventually want to be seen. And pin them at the shoulder, 2 cm from the edge. Do not worry about the neck gap, just pin it completely from one side to the other. To sew this, we set the machine to a straight stitch, with a 2.5mm stitch length. This is your basic straight stitch, as I will refer to it from now on. Stitch about a centimeter into the fabric, then reverse the machine and try to stitch backwards over the exact same stitch line. Then, again over the same line, go forwards again and sew the entire seam. At the end of the seam, go backwards and forwards again to finish the seam. This way, the stitches will stay in place and not unravel. After this, cut the seam short to about a centimeter. Set your machine to a wide zigzag and about 1 mm stitch length. This is what I will refer to as a zigzag stitch from now on. Then, sew the entire edge with this zigzag, trying to have the left stitch end up in the fabric and the right stitch next to the fabric. Again, go backwards and forwards at the beginning and end of the seam. Lastly, iron the seam to one side of the fabric. The side the seam points to is now on the back side of the garment. 
For both tuning versions, the next step is to zigzag stitch all around the outer edge of the facing. For the red tunic, I will be using a black thread for demonstration purposes on all seams that aren't visible on the outside. Feel free to use a thread better matching in color for all the seams. Then, lay the facing on the tunic body, right sides together, lining up the shoulder marking on the facing with either the marked shoulder line or the sewn shoulder seam. After that, you can use a straight stitch directly over the marked inner circle of the facing. Stop stitching about half a centimeter before you end up on the slash line, leaving your needle in the fabric but raise up the machine foot. Then, turn your fabric 90 degrees, lower the foot and stitch towards the point of the slash. Once you arrived at the bottom, make sure you can cross the slash with a single stitch. Again, leave the needle in, raise the foot, turn the tunic 90 degrees, lower the foot, stitch a single stitch and again in the same way turn the next corner to go back up along the slash line again. The stitching should end up looking slightly v-shaped, with the stitching tapering towards the end point of the slash at the bottom. Then we can actually cut the fabric of the inner circle, this time leaving a seam allowance of only 1cm. For the slash we cut carefully in between the two stitching lines, ending as close to the bottom stitch as possible. If you don't feel comfortable doing this with big scissors, feel free to grab the smaller ones. Then, to make turning easier, clip off the two corners at the start of the slash. Flip over the facing to the inside of the tunic. It is very possible it doesn't really want to stay put, so I'll put some pins into it for now. If the corners on the start of the slash don't want to turn, you can use a pen or other blunt object to push the corners out. If you notice the facing doesn't make a nice circle when it is turned, you can either cut the seam allowance a bit shorter, or make clips into the seam allowance so it eases into a circle easier. Then, to make it lay really nice and flat, we iron it. I'm using a cloth and a lot of steam for the woolly fabric, so I don't crush the fibers too much. Then we can do our first test fit! Just pull the tunic over your head to see if it fits. If you can't get the tunic over your head and notice that your neckline is too small, at this point you can flip it right side out again. If you notice that it was just tied around your neck, you can sew about half a centimeter outside the line that it currently at. That way the circle around your neck becomes larger. If it isn't the size around your neck that's the problem, but it's mostly a problem of you not being able to get it over your head, you can do both things. You can sew about half a centimeter outside this circle and you can extend this point down slightly. I can't of course go much further than that your interfacing is long. And then see if you can stitch from here all the way down. So then the gap here will become slightly wider as well. After you've stitched all of that, you can unpick this stitch line. So either with your small scissors or your seam ripper, you can undo this stitch line. Do that after you've stitched around for the bigger size, because this is basically your pins already. This way you don't have to repin everything. After you've done the sewing again, you can flip it to the other side again, iron it flat, and then do another fitting. And hopefully at that point it will fit. To make sure the facing will stay turned, we will do a round of top stitching next. First, we stitch close to the edge, about 3mm. This is stitching that will be visible on the outside, so I'll be using a matching thread as well here. But you could also opt to go with a contrasting color on purpose. Then, to finish it super neatly, to make sure the facing will be really flat, we do another round of top stitching, this time about 2.5cm away from the inner edge. At the bottom of the slash line, this can be stitched into a square shape. So you've done all your sewing on the sewing machine, but on the right side of the fabric you're left with all these threads. There's a really easy way to get rid of these and make it look nice. For that, we grab a needle, put the thread in the needle and sew it through the fabric. But considering we have a facing and two layers of fabric, we want it to go in between the two layers of fabric. And then you have your needle poke out on the top fabric again about two centimeters away. As you can see on the other side I don't see the needle. Then you can pull your needle through with the thread. You 
pull a bit on the thread so it comes out just slightly bit more. Cut it off. And because of the tension, the thread just disappears into the fabric. And that's how you put away your threads nicely. Then it is time for the sleeves. Again, with the right sides of the fabric together, match the middle of the sleeve to the shoulder seam or marking. And with a seam allowance of 2cm, stitch them together from one side of the sleeve to the other. After that, we can fold the tunic at the shoulder seam and pin the sleeves and sides together. This is so we can do a test fit. If you forgot to double the width of your sleeves, this is the result. Oops. Anyway, with the correct sleeve width, it should look like this. If you think your sleeves or tunic body is slightly too small, make a note of it. In that case, you should use less seam allowance at those parts. But I quite like the fit, so I didn't need to make any changes. Take the pins out and fold the tunic open again. Cut the seam allowance short, tapering it to the full seam allowance where the sleeves end in the tunic body. Set your machine to zigzag again and finish the sleeve edges. This next section is for a tunic without side splits. For the tunic with splits, skip to the next section. After finishing the sleeve seams, we can fold the tunic double again, right sides together and pin the sleeve and body together again. When pinning this, you can fold and pin the finished sleeve edge towards the sleeve. If you didn't need to make any changes, this is again with a seam allowance of 2cm. With a straight stitch, stitch all the way along the sleeve and the tunic body, making sure to sew exactly over the earlier stitch line where you sewed the sleeve to the tunic. You can then cut these seam allowances to a centimeter and zigzag stitch to finish them. Congratulations! You have now got something that resembles a tunic. For the tunic version with side splits, we can also fold the tunic double again and pin just the sleeves with the 2cm seam allowance. This makes it slightly easier to fit correctly in the next step. Put on the tunic again. On the front of the tunic, put a pin on the height you want your side splits to end. Take the tunic off again and fold it double lengthwise, so you can compare the height of the pins. Make sure you match the pins on both sides to the same height. Which one you choose exactly is up to you. After that, pin the side seam from the sleeve up to the pin you put in for the split and sew this together. When starting to sew on the sleeve side, make sure you fold the finished sleeve seams towards the sleeve and then start sewing from the point where you ended the sleeve seam. Then. Cut the seam allowance of the sleeve back to 1cm and zigzag finish. After that, cut the seam allowance of the side seam from the split to the sleeve back to 1cm and iron these seams open. Then, zigzag each side individually from the split to the sleeve. The time has come to finish the splits themselves. For this, we start by folding over the seam allowance by about 1cm. If the end tapers off due to the cut of the last 5cm of the body, it doesn't matter, but make sure the edge is in a straight line as possible. Then we can iron the folds flat. And we repeat the same process again, folding it over once more and ironing it flat. After pinning both sides, compare them. Are the folds about the same width? Then sew as close to the inner folded edge as possible so the seam stays down. My stitch line was about 1mm away from the fold. When you end up at the top of the split, sew about 1cm further, then keep the needle in the fabric, lift the foot, turn the tunic so you can sew towards the other half of the split, then sew back down again. The end result should look something like this on the right side of the tunic. And that was it for the splits, now it is time for the bottom edge. The process is pretty much the same as for the splits, but this time with a wider fold, as that just looks better on the bottom edge. Seeing as we cut 5cm seam allowance, that is the width we get to play with. I decided that I would double fold with a width of 2cm. It means my tunic would get an extra centimeter in length, but that doesn't really matter much. So the bottom edge was folded over 2cm, finicking with the edges so they wouldn't show on the right side. It was then ironed in place fold it over another time and iron once more. Then stitch once close to the inner fold, in my case about 2mm away from the fold. 
After that, we stitch yet another row of stitching close to the bottom edge, about 5mm, just to make it look neat. Do that for both bottom edges and you got a neat looking finish. For the other tunic without the splits, the process was very similar, but I did make slight changes to accommodate the fabric I was working with. First, we make sure the bottom edge is straight, then turn the seam over by 2cm, all the way around the bottom edge. This was ironed and folded over once more, but this time I folded it over by 3cm. Personally, I like wider bottom seams if the fabric is bulkier. I find it tends to keep the shape better. After another round of ironing, the seam is stitched close to the inner fold. But because of the bulkiness, it is more difficult to sew super close to the edge, so this was stitched 5mm away from the fold. And because this fabric won't lay as nicely crisp and flat anyway, I will just keep it at this. Just a single line of stitching finishes the bottom hem. Then onto the sleeves. Put on your tunic to determine where you want your sleeves to end. I can recommend moving your arms around a bit. You don't want your sleeves to hang over your hands, but you also don't want them too short. I like wrist length. Take this measurement on both sides and compare them when it lays flat to make sure your sleeves will end up the same length. Then put in some extra pins around the sleeve, so you can also see the line when the sleeve is rotated. Cut the seam allowance short to about 2cm. For the sleeves we will finish this very simply, so put your machine to zigzag and finish the edge of the sleeve. Fold this over once, double check your sleeve lengths are the same, and sew it in place. Again, for the green tunic I only used one stitch line to stitch this in place. For the other tunic I ironed the sleeve ends so they were crisp and added another row of stitching about 3mm away from the sleeve end. Turn your tunic right side out and if your tunic benefits from a full iron give it a press and with that congratulations give yourself a pat on the back. You have made yourself a basic but fancy tunic. These tunics might be basic in appearance, but that is especially great to make them very versatile. With just a few accessories you can turn them into full costumes. For winter costumes I can recommend wearing a basic thermal shirt underneath for extra warmth. And then it is a great basis. I hope all of this was clear to you. If you have any questions about any part of the process, do not hesitate to ask questions in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe. And if the tutorial was useful, you might consider a Ko-Fi. With that, thank you all for watching and see you next time.